Hey everybody and welcome back to Ducks and Downloads. So tonight we're going to be talking about one of my absolutely favorite topics ever, Sith Lords. Even better than that, ancient Sith Lords. I'm going to try and cut this into a two or three part video set where I'll be going over all the Sith Lords of the timeline that I can find and or are even worth the mention. So we will be going over the ancient Sith from about 7,000 BBY up to around three to 2,000 BBY or a little bit earlier, depending on when you want to put Darth Bane in the timeline, but we'll be cutting off before he gets apprentice. So we're going to be starting this list with one of the best swordsmen in the entire ancient Sith Empire, a fallen Jedi. Sad for them that they missed out on having such a person in their ranks. This is going to be Ajunta Paul. Ajunta Paul is one of the high generals of the fallen Jedi during the Great Schism War, uh, most of this is kind of a, a weird amalgamation of what is legend, what is canon, it's hard to tell. But we do know that Ajunta Paul uh, has been canonized through parts of games and other scripts. He is the High General for the Fallen Jedi, and after they lose in Corbos, though, they are exiled and they must find Korriban. Through their exile, they then become the future Dark Lords of the Sith, creating the very Sith Empire that the Jedi will have to fight against for millennia to come after this. So we'll start with just a quick description of Ajunta Paul. He, uh, after becoming the Jinari, through defeating Hakram Grush, the Sith King at the time, in single combat and beheading him with the war sword, uh, he became Jinari, Sith Lord, and the Sith people began to call him Typho Jim, uh, the name for the left-handed god, a god of swordsmanship, prowess, and warrior. Really fits Ajunta Paul. So with the Jutta Paul again, we have Jozan, who was a dark side healer. Not as much is known about her, but she will be mentioned later in a far off legend source, even after the Empire. Karnas Mur kind of has the same fate. He's not very well known in the prehistory things, but he is then later talked about in the legends. Not one of my favorites. I'm not a huge Cad Skywalker and the uh, other Dark Horse comics that cover what begins to become like Dark Empire. Those are never my jam. Ramdas Drapa uh, has a duel and dies. Again, not much known about him. Swords of Sin, not again, these are, these are just more or less names. They're not gonna have a lot of knowledge about them because this is just kind of like setting up who the Sith came from. But she does actually have a pretty good amount of things she talks about and is talking about her uh, as she is the point of view or the writer for the Book of the Sith. Comes in a really awesome holocron, I'll put a picture here. One of my favorite parts of my collection ever. So I'll definitely be pulling from pieces of that for future videos. Swords of Sin is a Sith alchemist and actually is one of the first to ever create the Leviathan and many other horrific Sith creatures, kind of sedimenting the Sith into a role of creating these monstrosities to hunt and kill Jedi. After these original Jedi, fallen Jedi make their way to Korriban and they begin to interbreed with the Sith people there, we then come later on uh, to the Sith Dark Lord Marka Ragnos. Marka Ragnos was an extremely powerful half-breed Sith, uh, so half pure blood, half fallen Jedi blood, which still then only added to his power. The Sith of this time period were very powerful on the dark side themselves, but next to a force user or those trained like the Jedi, nothing. It was very rare for anyone to have honed their skills like these ancient Jedi did. So that mixed blood really helped these new future kings to have a lot more power. Marco Ragnos has an amazing reign, and it is seen as one of the last full Dark Lords of the Golden Age of the Sith, which is a Dark Horse comic that I highly recommend. All the tales of the Jedi comics from Dark Horse are really, really nice for super old lore about the uh, Jedi or the original orders and the original Sith. After Marco Ragnos dies, his spot as Dark Lord has been set apart with battle between two of the top contenders, Ludo Kresh and Naga Sado. Ludo Kresh is a Sith pure blood, very, very stout in his ideas on keeping the borders where they are, shoring up defenses, and becoming a stronger, more mighty empire. Whereas Naga Saido, another interbred uh, Sith Lord, he chooses more of the idea of expansion and letting the Sith Empire grow and prosper more, rivaling the golden age that's already come before him. While they are coming to blows with each other, uh, war sword against war sword, the ghost of Marco Ragnos will appear and warn them that there are more important things to be dealing with right now than dealing with each other. They will put their duel on hold. Enter two twins, hyperspace prospectors from the nearby Republic system. 
these two are going to start a huge series of events which will lead Nagasado and Ludo Kresh into a more infighting. Nagasado will use the infiltration by these new Republic twins to spark backstabbing and uh, espionage inside the Sith ranks, which is their ways, of course, it's just how the dark side works, to spur the Sith into war against this Republic to further his agenda on pushing and becoming a bigger empire. In doing so, Ludo Kresh pulls back. So Nagasado then leaves and it starts an attack on the very Republic itself, using his impressive skills of battle meditation to lay waste to Republic homeworlds. Sadly, it doesn't work out as his apprentice then stabs him in the back and goes back to joining the Republic. In his fleeing after almost being defeated by the Republic, he does something amazing. Nagasado actually is able to come take two stars and pull their energy together causing them to supernova, taking out an entire star system and every Republic ship in it. Absolutely super powerful. These are real Sith right here. These are Sith that have no qualms with destroying entire systems and have the power to do so. Palpatine had to create a giant mechanism to do this. Nakaseto did it with his head. And this is a different level of Sith. So Nagasado will return to Sith space. Ludo Crush will try to seize opportunity. He will die. Nagasado will then become Dark Lord and he will reign for some time up until the next. Uh, we do not know exactly who may fall in between them, but then we have Tulak Horde. Tulak Horde is a human Sith Lord. This is, so this is when we're getting to the full humans. They're no longer having many of the uh, Sith species serve as the Emperor or Sith Lord from here on out. Um, Tulak Horde is known as a the Great Hunger Lord. He is an absolute destroyer and really sediments the Sith Empire in power and prosperity, unlike Nagasado. He did lead the way, but he, Tulak Horde really carried the torch. After Tulak Horde, we're going to start getting then to Exar Kun. Exar Kun is going to start a huge series of events which will lead to some of the most well-known Sith out there. Exar Kun takes his fellow fallen Jedi, Ula Keldroma, and they start a great war, a great hyperspace war, against the Jedi using their Mandalorian friends when Ula Keldroma defeats the Mandalore of the time. Exar Kun is one of my absolute favorite Sith. He uh, is one of the original dual wielding Sith or dual blades like Darth Maul had and really kind of invents and pushes that style further than anyone ever had before him. Exar Kun has a lot of really awesome battle ideas and is a very good manipulator and user of the force but he's not going to be able to hold on for very long until he is defeated and then it kind of goes a little quiet. This is when we're going to start getting, because of these Mandalorian Wars, into Revan and Malak. Now in the whole time this is going on, we can't forget that Darth Vitiate, who we of course find in Valkorion due to the Star Wars The Republic games, but Darth Vitiate is now ruling after the Tulai Corps, we believe, probably right after or maybe sometime after, but Darth Vitiate has been leading for a while as he, much like Tulai Corps had been studying, has now in essence transfer. That's right, Palpatine's been trying to do this, but the ancient Sith have done this without any problem. Tulak Horde was known to do it, and Darth Vitiate did it a lot. So, Revan and Malak go off after their Mandalorian Wars into dark deep space, or I should say, Revan before he is a Darth, we don't know his name then, and Alec who becomes Darth Malak. They return as Sith Lords, spurring the infinite empire's destructive machine uh the star forge against the republic and opening up an entire another jedi civil war darth revan is one of the most well-known sith out there and a lot of people absolutely love him darth malik an amazing side for him and a really really cool uh villain so then we're gonna get into the sith triumvirate but before that let's just again remember that somewhere randomly in the dark deep space Darth Vitiate probably on Droman Kaz is just chilling building the empire not knowing that every other Sith out there is trying to either destroy the force or ruin everything for him speaking of destroying the force back to the Sith triumvirate this is Darth Treya her two followers Darth Sion and Darth Nihilus Darth Treya is the one who tries to corrupt Mitra Surik uh known by Kreia at that moment in the early parts of the game to destroy the Force as she sees that the Force is the oppressive being that causes all strife in the galaxy. Remove the Force, there's no light side versus dark side, and they finally have peace. Darth Sion, well he's just too angry to die, so all he cares about is war. And Darth Nihilus, 
literally has to consume the force through living creatures or he himself will die because of the power he's obtained an absolute beast but they're bad people in a game so of course they get punked by Mitra Surik. after these events then we get into the star wars the republic games where we're going to have all of the rest of the story for darfishiate and valkorian uh and in between that time then we have such as darth mar darth malgus uh, and, you know, like Darth Barris. There, there are so many Sith you could name from the Star Wars The Old Republic games. Only ones that should really be mentioned that much are Darth Maul and Darth Malgus. Darth Maul is one of the few Sith who overcomes the pure dark side and realizes that it is a mixture of dark and light that is really the essence of the Force. He learns this while meditating as a Force ghost with Satil Shan. And Darth Malgus is another kind of like Vader, almost Darth Sion, Undying type of Sith. Darth Malgus is another very hate-filled Sith who lets that power fuel him to then push his agenda to one day, of course, rule everything. Not much more to go, just a few more little things to bombard you with. I know this is a very fast-paced, crazy, but I just want to get you guys some names so that way when I start talking about other dark side stuff in the future, we've already got a good video to go back to. So, in this timeline, okay, after Mar and Malgus and all of the Old Republic video games. This is where we get into Lord Khan and the Brotherhood of Darkness. Again, this is the where we're getting towards the end of the mass amounts of Sith, so it's going to be far easier for me to name and specifically talk about individual Sith. But Lord Khan's Brotherhood operated more in a sense of instead of having Darths and Dark Lords, everyone was equal. Not true. That's never ever true. Never ever in the Sith organization will that ever be true. Of course, Khan led it and his best friends were higher than everyone else and everyone did what they told them to. But it did breed what I believe was an amazing Sith who just maybe took it a little too far. Lord Khan is the one who through him and through his fellow Dark Brotherhood brings in Darth Bane. Darth Bane being, in my opinion, yes, the Sithari, the one who will destroy the Sith and rebuild them more powerful than ever. He took it a bit too far. He really believed that Darth Revan, for some reason, had this idea that there's only there should ever be two. But what I think more or less Darth Revan is talking about is one master, one apprentice in that sect. One master should not have multiple apprentices because then those apprentices find it far easier to gather together and kill their master. Whereas if it's just one-on-one, -on -one, that apprentice truly has to find a time and place that he is better than his master, or they will never defeat their master. So I love Darth Bane. I love what he does, where he really calls all of this weakness out of this, oh, we're all equal, man, in the Sith. That's not, that's not the Sith. He calls that out and begins a new Sith, which we'll start talking about more in the next video. <laughs> wow. Now, I know that was a lot, and I don't mean to just throw a whole bunch of names and numbers at you guys, but we got to know a little bit more about the Sith in a nice chronological order before I can really dive into the dark side. But if you have any questions, I want to hear them. Put them in the comment section down below. If you want a specific Sith for me to go over, let me know. If I miss something, I really would love to know that. I might act like I know a lot about Star Wars, but honestly, I know there are plenty more out there that know way more than I do. Uh, if you have any questions about what timeline or what era a certain Sith Lord is from, again, put it down there. I'd love to talk Star Wars with you guys individually. So don't forget to also like, share this, and subscribe. And I look forward to talking to you all next time. Have a great night.